we are gonna switch to our red beans and rice. Now, there are tons of ways to do this, and every single household in all of Cajun and Creole country does it differently, okay? I prefer to use instant rice and pre-done red beans because I like to make dinner and not cook all day, okay? Everybody in here has done brown beans or soup beans or pinto beans, and you know they can take forever. This little can took me about, I don't know, 10 seconds to open and 15 seconds to rinse out, okay? And this instant rice, once you add the flavors to it, you're looking more for the flavor than you are for something that's cooked for 12 or 13 or 14 hours, okay? So we'll get the same flavor incorporated into this rice because we're actually adding flavor to it and that's what's most important. We are going to chop our peppers and our onions and we're gonna start by heating up some butter real quick. And I believe this calls for about a tablespoon. We'll get this one turned on. And again, we're gonna leave it on high because we want it to cook pretty quickly. Now, for our onions, again, I cut them in half. I barely cut the bottoms. I just gave them a haircut and took that little bit of fuzz off. And we're gonna cut them across. And then we'll cut them back. And we're just gonna set them off to the side because we want our butter to get hot and our pan to get hot before we add them. And peppers, how many people remember how to cut a pepper? How many people went home and cut a melon, I have to ask? How many people will never, ever, ever cut a melon the old fashioned way? We, we did fruit salad last week for those of you who weren't here. And I showed them a slightly different way to cut melons because everyone here cuts melons the same way, right? They take a melon and they chop it in half and then they cut it into thin strips and they take a paring knife and they cut down the seeds and then they cut down the skin. It's so much easier if you take a whole melon, very much like this pepper, cut the bottom off, cut the top off, and then shave it all the way around and take the skin off. And then when you cut it in half, all you're doing is scraping the seeds out and chunking it. So with our peppers, we took the top and the bottom off, cut down the sides, and then we get all the seeds out and we don't waste any of the pulp. Why do we do that? Because I hate playing with seeds. And that's the long and the short of it, folks. Really, that's all it boils down to. There's nothing worse than when you're doing food and you spend a half hour trying to get the seeds off your cutting boards and off your hands and off everything else you have. That, and I don't like to cut through a pepper and then put my knife down and have to rip the center apart and then pick it back up. And it just kind of saves you a step. We'll take all these little pieces. We'll get them all chopped up real quick. And again, it doesn't have to be perfectly uniform. If you want to make them perfectly uniform, well, if anyone comes to your house and they tell you that your peppers aren't uniform, hand them a knife. <laughs> Invite them two hours early and show them where the kitchen is. By the time this starts to saute and it starts to cook down and we add the beans and the rice and everything else to it, it's not really going to be that noticeable. So we'll get these chopped. That butter's about close. We all know how temperamental this stove is. Keith, that's something you need to remember. This stove is so temperamental. One week it gets hot in three seconds. The next week it gets hot tomorrow. And the oven tends to be the same way. We found that out the hard way, didn't we folks? So if you're gonna use the oven, I turn it on about two o'clock. It's Sunday. Okay. Now our scallions, we're not gonna chop them up yet. We'll do them last. They're actually just gonna go in last and kind of more on top. Because these onions, they're gonna be green, but once you cook them, they're gonna be a lighter green. And we want those scallions to be that kind of bright pop that we're gonna mix in with it. So you have the bright red of the kidney beans and then the rice, but then you'll have that standoffish kind of bright green that isn't cooked. And it gives it a slightly different flavor because naturally raw onions are a little different than cooked onions. Okay, our butter is about melted. It's starting to sizzle, so we can add our peppers and our onions. Now, with this particular recipe, add whatever you want. You can add ground beef, you can add sausage, you can add chicken livers, which are actually a dirty rice and a red beans and rice tradition. Um, ground beef, sausage. 
pork chops, shrimp, chicken, doesn't matter. You can actually make this into a whole meal. Put everything in the pot first, okay? Add your water and your rice after that. As long as you make sure you put it all in first and you cook it thoroughly because your rice isn't really gonna continue cooking. Because it is an instant rice, it's more of a boil the water and let it sit or simmer. So you wanna make sure anything you put in there as a raw product cooks before we add the extra stuff to it, okay? We have our kidney beans and we're gonna add them as soon as that's ready. Chicken base or bouillon cubes. How many people love these things? How many people take a week to dissolve them? That's the only downside to them, is sometimes they're a little bit of a pain to dissolve. If you can, try and just crack them and crush them in your fingers. Break them up a little bit. The finer you get them, the faster they'll dissolve. Also, we're gonna add them to our pot before we add our liquid. And the heat and the butter and the moisture that comes out of the onions is also gonna help break them down a little bit. And then when you add your water to it, it's just a much easier dissolving method. Once this starts to cook, you can add them at any time. Once it's come back up to temperature and it starts to sizzle, because that's how you break it down. And I'm gonna crush the rest of these over the pot, because as you saw with that, when it kind of blew up on me, and if they're blowing up, we wanna make sure that it doesn't go everywhere. But you do wanna make sure they do break down, kind of like that cayenne pepper thing, that one person that gets a whole big chunk, probably gonna break their tooth and yeah, it's just chicken base, but it's still not gonna be very enjoyable. So the finer you can break them, the better. And I'm gonna put one in here whole and hope that it'll actually work to break down. Again, as they start to get warm and they start to get wet, they should break a little easily, more easily. And they're already starting to knock down a little bit. Let me wash my hands real quick. Okay. As this is starting to heat up, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but I'm basically just taking the spoon and kind of smacking down on them, and they're starting to crush into almost powder instantly, okay? Which is what we were hoping for, because we don't want to work overly hard. Now, they have so many forms of chicken base downstairs on the shelves and in every grocery store across the country. They have stuff that's more of a paste or more of a tomato pa tomatoey paste product. That works just as well, if not better than bouillon cubes. Again, one of those things we had, so we wanted to make sure we use them, not buying something extra. If you don't have them and you wanted to buy chicken stock instead, because it's in a can downstairs, or you have some on your shelf, by all means, use that instead of water, okay? We're just showing multiple ways of doing the same thing. Those actually have completely broken down already, okay? And I want to add my spices to this as well. Again, we don't want to have that giant ball of cayenne pepper biting anybody in the nose, especially since it's going to look very similar to our kidney beans. So I'm going to add those in and our salt and pepper. We're going to stir that real quick just to kind of break it down. And I don't know if you can see on the overhead, but the part that I've stirred versus the part I haven't, it changes the color of it dramatically. And that's what's going to help flavor our rice when we do it. Okay, kidney beans, we opened the cans, we rinsed them, we washed them, we drained them, we put them back in the can, and now we're going to add them to it. You want to take that, pardon the expression, but slime out of the can. Um, that's starch, and it will help you thicken it, but when you're adding it to rice, do you really want to extra thicken it? Um, the flavor that you're looking for here, and the reason that you add everything into your pot before you add your water is now that that flavor from the cayenne and the cumin and the salt and pepper is now going into those beans. And if you have all that extra um, starch and slime on the outside of it, it has to work off the beans before it then goes into them, okay? So I like to clean them, rinse them first. That and I just really don't like it, to be perfectly honest with you. As your beans get hot, they'll start to split a little bit, and that's how you know you can add your water to them. I measured out six cups of water because we're gonna do three cups of rice. Now rice is always two to one, okay? If you use one cup of rice, it's two cups of water. Whether it's regular, instant, brown rice, long rice, that's a good basic starting point. You may need to add a little bit more water as you're cooking it or a little bit less once you go through. If you're doing risotto, you have to add it three or four or five times through the cooking process. We're gonna cut that one down a little bit. Okay. 
But overall, two to one is what you're looking for for your rice, okay? Now, the last thing I wanna do with this recipe before we move on is I wanna get our scallions ready. And then we're gonna switch to our beignets. Has anybody ever had beignets before? They are a really fancy French word for donut. Pretty much that's what they are. They actually make their dough a little thicker and then they cut it and then they deep fry it that way. This is more of a batter. Um, it's very similar to the consistency of funnel cake and we're actually gonna drop it into the fryer using spoons. Um, but it's very, very close consistency. And then we're gonna top it with powdered sugar because well, every dessert needs powdered sugar, right? This burner decided to work today, so we're gonna cut it down a little more. I'm telling you, these burners are possessed. They just don't like me. Our green onions. With your green onions, leave the bottom band on. If not, you spend all day chasing green onions around the cutting board. You wanna open them up though, and anything you see that's starting to wilt, you wanna pull down and out. And get rid of. Same thing on this one. And then you always want to give them a haircut. Take that whole top layer off, just because you don't want the dry, bitter ends in there. Really? This burner just doesn't want to cool down today. I guess that's a good problem. All right, with these, remember I said leave the band on there. If you leave the band on there, it does most of the work for you when you go to cut them. You're not chasing them all over. Now, these are going to be raw in your product. So, you don't want a big one because nobody likes to bite down on an onion that big. You want to try and keep them about three pennies thick. Can everybody picture that? Any thicker than that, it's going to be a little bit strong. And because we're going to add these raw and they're just going to kind of warm up from the rice, much bigger than that will be too strong. Now, I am stopping above the white because the white is gonna be slightly too strong for this. We don't want that overly intense flavor from the onion, we just kinda of want the more subtle flavor. We'll get these two chopped down and then we're just gonna set them aside because we won't need this until we're ready. You could use chives, and it's predominantly for color in this. Again, I don't like recipes that say you have to do anything. So we don't have to stop in the middle of the second one. Where did my bowl go? Now again, we're using three to one, or two to one, I'm sorry. So we need three cups of water, rice, because we used six cups of water. Three cups of rice. And rice is one of those things where a few grains isn't gonna hurt. An extra cup is gonna make a mess. So try and keep it as close as you can to what you're looking for quantity wise. But we have that ready, so once our water boils, we can add it. And I don't know, that is just food club, food city, instant white rice, okay? And I'll leave the box up here so you can see. Um, Again, we're trying to make this so that you can make dinner quickly and make dinner in a reasonable time and not spend 40 days in the kitchen. Um, if you have long grain rice at home and you want to cook it from scratch, by all means, it works the same way. Mix all your ingredients, get your water ready, and then add your rice to it and then continue to simmer it. Um, we only have an hour, unfortunately. And I like to do as many things in the entire period as I can, okay? Now, once you add your rice, you wanna stir it, and then we're gonna cut the heat off because that was boiling water, and I promise you it's gonna stay hot for more than the amount of time we're working here. And we're gonna cover it back up so we can hold all that steam and that moisture in there. Now, I'm gonna take half my green onions, a little more than half. I wanna drop them in here, and I did turn this off already, so we're not really cooking them. And we're just gonna kinda stir that in real quick and it'll give it that bright green. 
and then the rest we're just going to sprinkle on top. Okay, now if I did this right, clean pot. Our mac and cheese actually was so cheesy that that pot came out cleaner than that. If you can imagine that. Now the rest of our green onions, we're just gonna sprinkle on top because I like that really bright look. And we'll get rid of these.